for this session, I'm going to be talking to you about a new vector of data loss that uh, Palo Alto Network discovered in inline email DLP. Um, so as you can see, there are many vectors of data loss. So right from um, what do you call the cloud to SaaS to uh, your network, and now um, the major one in terms of email. So uh, if you look at how uh, typical data loss is uh, detected, so it's either out of band or API based or it's inline. So um, historically we've had email DLP covered via API based. So it should be available via Prisma SaaS. And today we are launching it with the uh, new smart post kind of technology, which I'll go through in just a moment. But think about it as a um, hybrid approach towards data protection, API and inline. And currently inline email DLP will be the new vector of data loss that we will have coverage against. From a DLP perspective, we continue to be uh, operating with a three pronged approach. So there will be enhancements that you will see in terms of detection efficacy. So how do you provide the best in class detection as far as data loss or discover, data discovery is concerned? And uh, second one would be control points or vectors of data loss and coverage across these uh, control points. So we continue to expand so inline DLP per se has expanded to about 68 applications for which we provide inline DLP. And now we are adding coverage for email. So the current rollout will be for Office 365. If you as a customer has Office 365 uh, exchange online and such, uh, you can definitely leverage the capabilities that are available in general, uh, generally available today. And uh, uh, three months from now, we are planning to roll out for Gmail, uh, G Suite uh, customers as well. So please reach out to us. So uh, the PM driving this is Priyansh Cheswal uh, on my team. So she is definitely the person to uh, connect with. Uh, happy to um, support and uh, compliment uh, along with her. But uh, she would be the person driving this. Um, I am the messenger here simply because she's uh, out sick, but uh, I guess, between the two of us, we'll be able to provide you with um, coverage as far as email DLP is concerned. Uh, with that, I'll get to the next one. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, there are different scenarios under which um, data loss can happen from an email. So it could be an engineer forwarding an internal e internal product architecture to personal, e personal email. So the distinction between a personal and a corporate is uh, critical here. And the same way, um, there could be another persona, it could be a HR person accidentally sending out again uh, personally identifiable information uh, to people that are unauthorized, uh, uh, who do not have who do not um, have access to such information. Similarly, it could be a salesperson uh, sending unencrypted product roadmap. So um, there might be scenarios where you want to do uh, static encryption, file-based encryption and then share it with people who are authorized, again, uh, based on our back and access controls and lease privilege and such. Uh, such. Um, so there are many other scenarios that could be pertaining to your organization, to your needs, but at the end of the day, we uh, primarily focus on how do we control sensitive or regulated data uh, from being exfiltrated or leaked. Uh, similarly, if there is legitimate use, how do you make sure there's um, safe sharing, if you may? and uh, um, organizing, orchestrating the policies around um, least privilege, um, risk minimization, compliance-based outcomes, definitely is top of mind as far as uh, corporate outbound email is concerned. And uh, the whole problem space proliferate as you um, expand it to diverse set of user group, internal employees, outside customers, uh, safe use of customers like uh, partners and um, such. So um, with that, we'll get into the um, problem space, solution space. So we are launching email DLP uh, and the key vignettes that we uh, adhere to are outlined here. So if you were a customer and you care about comprehensive enterprise-wide consistent email, consistent DLP program, then this will be part of it. So that's the foundation and, and premise under which we operate. So how does a customer get that consistent detection efficacy in terms of a PII, PCI, GDPR, uh, making sure you have that single uh, architecture or framework as you report to your uh, higher ups. Uh, similarly, um, we've rolled out a lot of machine learning based capabilities, source code detections, intellectual property protection, um, uh, similarly EDM, so all of those uh, 
capabilities that are released as far as detection product is concerned uh, remain consistent as far as an enforcement is um, uh, concerned with email DLP. Uh, from an exfiltration and inline protection is concerned, the capabilities continue to be blocked, quarantine, uh, manager approval for emails, uh, which go to an untrusted email domain, and ability to encrypt emails sent to trusted email domains. So all of that remains consistent. And uh, if you have people who are using email as a uh, vector via, uh, let's say, uh, any device, a uh, thick client, thin client, web-based email, so we want to be client agnostic and device agnostic. So uh, all these founding principles we adhere by, and uh, you should be able to leverage all of these and build your comprehensive DLP protection program um, as far as a, a vector of data loss is concerned. Let's look at a quick demo. I'm going to allow it to play uh, with a voiceover, if that's OK. Um, I'm present. We can't hear the voice. Sorry? Uh, can't hear the voice. Oh, you folks can't hear it? Uh, all right. I will. Thanks for that, Priyansh. I'll try to voice over. Give me a second. So this one is around the EDM uh, database. So this is data that's exact data match. And all we are trying to do is uh, trying to demonstrate with the help of uh, when you go into the console, you'll be able to detect it. So here he has a PDF, and the PDF is going to be detected using OCR. So there is the OCR that's going to kick in, there's the EDM, and then there's PDF-based file detection. So this is one drive that he's uh, logging into. And there are two draft emails that are being created here, and it's going to internal Palo Alto Networks, Brendan Kelly at Palo Alto Networks. So here, the first one was blocked, and there was a bounce message. So the block has been using native Office 365 capabilities to block. And it also tells you the uh, directions how to fix that uh, capability and get safe usage of emails. So then the violation of policy will be notified again in the same uh, experience. So here he, he's trying to show you the policies, the incidents uh, from the management console. So as you can see, there will be the policy step under which there is a new console called email DLP policy. The same construct exists for DLP as a policy for SAS and other things. Similarly, we'll have email DLP. From a severity, action, status, all of that remains consistent. And the evaluation criteria is a top down kind of evaluation criteria. The name and priority remains important. And then the email application, right now it's Microsoft Exchange. You'll have Gmail shortly. So if you have existing data profiles, you'll be able to connect and uh, onboard your data discovery profiles. 
conditions again uh, they tend to be slightly different for email so you'll have sender email domain email domain sender user group sender user all of the email specific constructs that are data driven based on the application of choice finally response again response are slightly different as well log forward email for approval quarantine and trip. so all of this are specific to email so you have much more richer controls and response actions as far as email is concerned these will rely on the native email capabilities of our registry hub. I'll go over the architecture in just a bit. So there will be different actions that you can choose from based on your needs as customer environments. So as you can see, this is a policy domain consistent, but there's a different data profile that we enable block CI and sensitive data. Similarly, response is seemingly different. So he's uh, basically doing a monitor mode versus a block mode. This is the incidents page. So over here, you can see the emails that are monitored, that are blocked, and uh, with specific actions. So right now, payment failure, as you can see, there was a block action there. Uh, there was a monitor action, and then the updated customer and for the block action. So you have rich metadata. Uh, everything that uh, pertaining from prompt to email creation dates, metadata, uh, as far as uh, email is concerned, you will also be able to download the file. So you'll have to have Outlook on desktop to uh, verify how this email looks like once you download that actual email. This is a prerequisite for downloading. As you can see, there are snippets and other things also that also exist with the email DLP. So here you can see EDM uh, extract that again pops up. So incident responders should have comprehensive information as far as the verdicts and decision making is concerned. So they would be able to make an informed decision when it comes to incident response analysis. Uh, there is a dashboard. And uh, when you click on drop down, you'll have email DLP as a specific full point. So there will be one for API actions, one for suspicious user activities, and one for email DLP. From a timing perspective, you'll be able to select drop down for the past what, what kind of days. And the incidents that you have, how much of them are under which severity, and how, how much email volume you had for outbound emails, and different actions that were taken for those emails. Similarly, there's policies, like I said, monitor and block. So which of the policies matched? So typically uh, we've been looking at email address. So this one adds capability for email inline and how does email inline DLP uh, exist for outbound email traffic? So from a platform perspective, now you have complete coverage as far as email DLP, SaaS, cloud, network, all of those are concerned. So um, now once you're uh, com comfortable or um, happy with the experience that you had with the DLP portfolio, you'll be able to um, leverage the same detections as far as the uh, DLP discovery is concerned and apply those controls to your email program as well. With that, let's get to the next one. So um, here I wanted to highlight to you how this all works in the background. So if you look at it, uh, I initially mentioned that the idea or the thesis behind this was we have to be email client or uh, platform agnostic. So as you can see, there's the mobile, web mail, email uh, client, uh, web email client, thick client, desktops and all that. So irrespective of which client your users are coming from, and any of the protocols that they come through, as long as there is a enterprise email service that you've signed up either at Microsoft Exchange or Google Workspace, we will be able to um, uh, perform these protection capabilities. So what happens is the next half is configured on the email provider. So you'll be routing traffic from your Exchange email to Palo Alto Smart Post. So this, is, this will be an SMTP relay that comes out um, and 
hits our DLP uh, cloud delivered DLP service and our DLP service will be uh, inspecting the email contents and the subject and body and we'll be able to apply the policies or X headers. So these headers will be inserted uh, to reflect the actions or response actions that you've configured as a customer. So block, quarantine, uh, whatever, uh, encrypt or any of those actions that you uh, configured, we'll be inserting those headers, packaging it and sending it back to the native email provider and the same control or incident response that you've configured on your email provider will be enforced as far as the outcome is concerned or response action is concerned. So think about it as a seamless experience consistent with uh, whatever client uh, the user uses. And again, the same um, incident response workflows exist throughout the um, experience. So um, with that, it helps you to remain consistent while using the comprehensive DLP uh, platform and detection capabilities that is offered by Palo Alto Network. Um, so as you can see, there is a um, different ways in which customers can um, connect to your um, or users can connect to your uh, enterprise. So they could be from your headquarters, branch office, uh, mobile users, any of those. And right now, in addition to all the other services that we offer, DLP, SaaS, Wildfire, SFPM, email is another one that's added. So connectivity to your SaaS and Crown Jewel uh, continue to be um, safeguarded, protected uh, using Palo Alto Network's enterprise DLP. Uh, there are more uh, capabilities that we continue to add as far as detections are concerned, AI-based augmentation is concerned, um, new vectors of data loss in terms of um, uh, uh, that is being planned and also co expanding coverage as far as inline DLP is concerned. So generative AI apps, how do you protect against the chat GPTs of the world and such? So um, please reach out to us